So I'm doing this video today because I've been asked how do you get rid of the horrible layer lines in your prints, um, especially on detailed prints. So although I don't FDM print anymore, I used to have about five FDM printers at one point. So I'm just going to show you a few things that I used to do to get rid of my layer lines and a few examples of what you can do with these techniques. So there's two techniques that I used to use. One would be to lower the build plate and another one is to just paint paint the parts with either epoxy resin, printer resin or varnish. Um, but each one of those has its drawbacks like there's, there's pros and cons with each one. But the, one of the best ones that I found, which I used on this print and this print, was to lower the build plate while it's printing. And what I mean by that is, when once I've got the first layer, once the printer had done the first layer, I would reach behind the printer and I would just hold the two dials and I would twist them exactly the same amount. So I'd just move my fingers like that. And you, get, you get used to it quite quickly, so it's like one turn. Then I'd move to the front and do the same. So that was dropped. That would have dropped the printer height by, you know, like sort of a, a sheet of paper or so. That's going to stop some of the squishing effect when you when the layers are being laid. So instead of ending up with a print like this, this is actually not a bad one. This is quite a good print, but you can still Yeah, those lines are quite bad in some places. You can see, you know, they should be showing up on the camera. But then I've also got prints that, as you can see, are like this. This has been painted with just a basic acrylic clear coat, just to see if it would make any difference. This was like in the early days when I was trying different techniques. But as you can see, this print, where even where there is no clear coat. It's almost impossible to find anything to scratch on it. On some of these, the edges where, where it's obviously going to see the step in, you can. But I'm having to really, really dig in deep to to get that. But anywhere else, there's nothing. It, this is as smooth as an FDM. This is as smooth as an SLA print. And this is, like I say, this is by dropping the build plate while it's printing. If you go too far, then you will lose details. You're never really going to lose strength unless you really, really drop it. The easiest printers I've found to drop, to raise and lower it, are the new, the more modern FDM printers, like the Cheron and I think it was the CL10, is it? The Creality one? Because it's digital, so you could just raise the print head by like 0 0.5 and then by another 0 0.2. And I would do that about every roughly about every half an hour, 40 minutes, on my f to dial it in basically, to find out how much I need to raise or lower that build plate to get those perfectly smooth layers being laid. I've got, a, I've got one of the TIE Fighter ones, so it's completely smooth in some of the places. But at the bottom, and then you can see where I've tried to dial it in again at the top, and it's changed it a little bit, but and it's basically smooth. And this really helps out with all the details and stuff because everything's so much more nice and crisp. And obviously, there's less cleanup. So these, this damaged area. This was because I was. This was printed on the Cheron when I first purchased it. And we just fitted a volcano hot end and I think there's moisture in the PLA so it was printing fine and then it some areas where it's doing a lot of retractions. You could hear the popping of the PLA. So it's just one of those things that you have to go through. But even with this even with dropping the build plate you don't really lose any de any details. This print was this is a two inch print. And you can see every single detail on this, even the little tiny skulls, you can see all that eye and all the details on there, and the fleur de Leon, yeah.
This got damaged when I was removing the supports, so it, it did print it all perfectly. So you can print miniatures on an FDM printer. It's you know it's just a little bit of a more little bit of a pain in the ass dial it in, and it's not it's not going to be nowhere near as quick as an SLA printer. But yeah. Anyway, so one method to get these prints smooth would be epoxy resin, which is this stuff. This is from Spain because it's the only place that I could find a rapid set. But you lose a lot of details if you use this stuff. Just because it's thicker by nature, you can get thinner stuff, so it's got a much lower viscosity, but it's it will also run, which means it will puddle, so it will gather up in certain, certain details, and you'll lose those details. So I don't recommend using epoxy. And I've got an example of an epoxy print versus a normal one, so I'm not going to zoom out for the whole thing. I'll just show you this side by side. So, so this is a resin print and an FDM print, and this was the FDM print, which obviously had to be epoxy coated. You can see the loss of detail there, and that, you know, it's, it's night and day. And you can see the 3D printed parts. I had a 3D printed this this section, but at the time I didn't know how to slice files up in Mesh Mixer, so the bigger parts I just printed as whole sections on the Charon, and then to get rid of all the layer lines, I painted it with epoxy resin. And as you can see, I lost a hell of a lot of details there. I mean, there's, there's just no comparison between the two. And I almost mounted the alien model to this, but I just weren't happy with it, so I went back and redid it and I sliced it up in mesh mixer. So I'm going to smooth these prints now using the method that I normally use, which is to paint them with resin, um, UV printer resin. So just buy yourself a cheap bottle of cheap resin. If you're just going to use it for this, you may as well just like by the cheaper brand. I prefer the Elegoo ABS or Elegoo Standard. It, it's slightly stronger than normal resin, but the, the, none of them are that strong really. But you're not doing it for strength anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So you're also going to need a laser pen and some pure alcohol for your brush. So, so for large areas, do a large area on make you so like these ears for example these are terrible and it does it sometimes you end up with like a perfect print all the way up and then you get these crappy lines here so I'm gonna get rid of those so I'm just gonna take some of the resin and pour it out you don't want to get this in direct sunlight don't overload the brush you just want a little bit on there Paint over those lines.
before you do your resin coating, you can get inside with these ones because the diamonds run all the way to the very tip and they've, because they're these sort of weird funky shapes, you can really sort of get in there and clean up and sharpen your details before you go in with the resin, which just means you're going to define some of these details. You just, that's all you're doing really, it's just defining the details before you resin coat. Like, these vents on Mickey's mouth so because of the shape of this file I can quite easily just go over these a little bit and you can see how much easier it's getting once you've cleaned up the print, then you just want to be painting it on. You really do want to be painting lightly. Now, you, this is just before, so you're still going to have to sand it all over. So, for more detailed areas, put a tiny bit on my brush.
Oh, so I'm not doing the old model. I'm just doing these aliens. So, and just before I show you the difference primed, when you have the good thing about this resin is see, see how his claws missing, claws missing. You can actually build that back up with resin just by It's gone from having no toe to having a bit of a toe there. And obviously if you just keep doing this, it will just build it up completely.
So I'm just going to drift over a little bit with this Bellagio primer. I don't use this for my models. It's horrible stuff. As you can see, the one that's been painted over with resin looks really good. And it's the same on his face, the details. Obviously, you're, if, if you've only got an FDM printer, you're going to spend a, a much, much longer time cleaning up the print than what I just did. This was just to show you roughly the concept, so you can see like side A side B. So if you just if I'd have spent say, you know, just another half an hour cleaning up some of these areas a little bit more this would look just as just as smooth and clean as a SLA print. You just have to put that little bit of extra time and effort in there. Like I say I've not even bothered properly sanding this. I just you know gave it a quick job and it took a print that was like that and made it like that in just a few minutes to me it's a no-brainer especially when the only other alternative is, is using these sort of paste this is how I started out originally and it, it just don't work nowadays if I was going to rebuild an entire area like this I would use Milliput um, I would use something like this Milliput and I'd just shape the area, smooth it, wait for it to dry and then sand it. So, so yeah, that is how to repair, rebuild and smooth FDM prints with a little bit of printer resin and the laser pen. And it does help if you've got a if you've got a set of funky little files. So. I believe I bought these from Amazon. If I can find the link for it, I will put the link in the description. So, then another thing, you can use any brand, like I say, of resin. You may as well, if, you, if you're just using it for this purpose, you may as well just buy the cheapest. So, yeah, so that's the end of this video. And I hope you find some of that useful. If you do, like. If not, don't like, I guess. <laughs> 